So thanks to be here for this talk about backend for frontend. Um, I have a one hour slot, I won't fill it, so if at any point you want to ask questions or make comments or whatever, feel free. I prefer the talk to be interactive, especially since during the pandemics I talk to my screen a lot and the screen doesn't tend to ask questions and it's a bit boring. So uh, yeah, back to on-site on events, we talk to people. If you don't have questions, that's fine too. Uh, I'm Nicola Frankel. Um, I've been a developer for two decades, which is probably a long time for most of you. Um, I worked mainly on the GVM. I worked on the Java platform, Spring, well, before Spring, Java EE, then Spring. A couple of years ago, I started to do some Kotlin. I love Kotlin. Who knows about Kotlin? Wow, it's not a .NET developer conference that could. I thought that NEC was uh, .NET, but um, I'm learning Rust at the moment, uh, like by leaps and bounds. It's really, really interesting. Um, and a couple of years ago, I also decided that I had enough of projects because they were like those uh, like customers and they already had like strange requirements. And in general, organizations, they want you to solve their organizational problems with technical solutions. And when you, your scope is the technical scope, then it's not that fun. So I became a developer advocate. So now if you don't care about my advices, that's fine. <laughs> I won't know it, so everything will be fine. Anyway, as I mentioned, I've been working uh, for some time already. And when I started working, this was what we did. That was amazing, right? Server-generated pages. But now it's back full circle again, as I understand. But yeah, that, that's what we did. It worked very well. Um, I can show you some crazy code, like hello world type of code, because now I'm a developer advocate, so I'm not supposed to do something complex. Besides, I, perhaps I'm not a developer anymore. Uh, I, I developed the stuff in Python, so I hope that's fine with you. Who here is a Python developer? Well, there are nobody, no Python, one person, okay. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I'm lower than that, so that's fine, okay. <laughs> I thought, wow, perhaps I will talk to people, I will, I will do some Python, even though I don't know Python. It will make, like, you know, the relation better, but nobody here knows Python. I should have done it in Kotlin, but anyway. So here, it's, it's a Flask application. I don't use a database because I'm super lazy, so I have data that is in arrays. Then I have like three routes. First route is for products. Second route is for news. Third route is for debugging information. Very important. Most developers, they don't care about it, but I do. And then the main route aggregates everything and returns everything in one go. So here it's not like a page that is generated server-side, but it like fits this model that in general you have like one single, end uh, one single endpoint and then you have something that queries it and you get all the data and everybody is happy. But of course, it didn't stay like that for long. Because afterwards, there were phones and tablets and devices and whatever. And so we had the same thing. We still had like a server endpoint, but we had to deliver data for all those different devices. And of course, we could still do the same. We deliver everything. And then on each device, you need to remove what you don't want. Okay? And that's not a great idea. Because first, every device needs to do it, which is additional like computing power that you lose on each device, which is not super nice for the user. And then on the network side, you return a whole payload and you might use only a part of it, which from an engineering side is not that great as well. So of course now everybody has 5G, right? Yeah, that's the point. <laughs> when you say, hey, everybody has 5G. No, no. <laughs> Sometimes you don't even have 4G, like depending on where you are. So be nice to your user, be considerate, 
just written what you need. But it gets better because you say, OK, we can actually be smart and just return what the device needs. So you might have a different route. You might have a query parameter. You might have a header. And then you, when you request the endpoints, it returns you the data that you need and only the data that you need. So there are Kotlin developers. Perhaps there are Java developers. No Java developer? Ah, interesting. So Kotlin developers, you are Android developers, right? No, there are no more Kotlin developers. They just disappeared in like five minutes. Where are my Kotlin developers? For what? Sorry. OK. So no Python, no Java, no Kotlin. .NET developers? Ah, that's what I thought. <laughs> OK, and then all my references get lost because, well, I don't know .NET. Um, it's, it will be hard, but I try to communicate it. Um, what we did in the time, we tried to return like generic data. And then on the server side, we added what we called servlet filters, or if you want, just filters. And basically, depending on the device, that was asking the data, we just like filter it here. That was fun and nice, and everybody was happy. And now came the fun stuff, the microservices revolution. Who here does microservices? Yeah. You don't. Yeah, you do, you do. OK, I will return the question. Who here doesn't do microservices? Ooh. Couple of hands, yeah. People who do microservices are very proud because that's hype. And well, that's a good way to get higher. I'm not kidding, actually. I'm very serious. Um, but I think a bit differently. And so just because I'm French and we like to complain, uh, give me a couple of minutes to rent. We are in an industry that right now says that microservices are good. I mean, I don't know if you like, went to a couple of talks. That was the grail. Right? You wanted to do microservices. And <coughs> monolith are bad. Bad. Ooh. No. No. I you, disagree with that. I also. But that's the state of the industry nonetheless. And... Well, I, again, give me a couple of slides to try, perhaps, to instill some kind of uh, critical thought into that. This is the definition of microservices by Martin Fowler. I don't invent anything. If you are unhappy with it, just bring it to Martin. I'm not responsible. Whether you like it or not, that's what I will use. In the same blog post that I referenced it here, you can find like characteristics of microservices. And in general, all the technical aspects are respected. But the last bullet point is not one technical aspect. It's how you handle, how you manage. So now let me Rephrase, re-ask the question. Who here does microservices according to those characteristics, especially the last one? Meaning you are doing products and not projects. Meaning that you have recurring budget from year to year, of course, it can change. Whereas a project has a start date and an end date. Now, who does microservices according to this definition? So we went to like nearly everybody to two and two halves. That's very interesting. So basically, according to Martin Fowler, you don't do microservices. So you can remove it from your resume right now. I will check afterwards. Let's get a bit further. I'm sure that everybody has heard about Conway's law. 
it's okay if you tell me no. Again, this is a discussion. Everybody has heard of Conway's law? Okay, great. So the idea, and, and this is Melvin Conway, by the way, so I was very happy to take a selfie. Huh? Prime. Um, the idea is that if you have an organizational structure, then your architecture will reflect the communication in the structure. And when I started hearing about microservices like five, six, seven years ago, it was very clear. Every talk about microservices said, you must reverse Conway's law. Meaning that right now we have layer-based architecture, and the reason is that we have like layer organized teams. So if you want to have a microservices architecture, you must have independent teams. Again, who here has this kind of organization? Don't be shy. Most of you do. <laughs> no, nobody dares. Huh? And okay, and who have this kind of organization? Oh, really? Wow, that's cool. I, in general, it's about the same number of people who do uh, products. That's really cool. So, okay, there, let's say 30% of the room are organized like this, and nobody organized like this. So that leaves 70%. I don't know how you are organized. <laughs> so either you are too shy to admit it, which is fine, or something else. So can somebody who hasn't raised their hand tell me how they are organized between this and this or something else? I feel like, like a school teacher asking the students <laughs> and nobody like, you all look at your shoes. I'm, a, I'm not that impressive. I told you I'm French, that's fine. <laughs> okay, forget it. So still, this is a high number of people who do like this. So if you organize like this, microservices might be a thing. The problem is 30% is already for me a high number. So it's like, you know, product, not project. If we go into the detail, there might be some grain of truth, or so it might be a bit different. The problem, if, if you have like a legacy organization organized around like this, and you want to migrate around like this, who will be in your way to do this? What does the guy look like? There is a hint. He has a suit and a tie. <laughs> do I look like I have a suit and a tie? Can show you I'm French. Um, no, this guy is a middle manager. So the person who can help you going from this kind of organization to this kind of organization are the middle managers, right? So in this organization, the middle managers are at the top here. There is one middle manager for the UI team, one here and one here. Where are the middle managers in this schema? <laughs> they are gone. So basically, the, the person, the people who can help you migrate your organization from your legacy state to the to-be state are the people who will be made irrelevant. They won't have a job anymore. It's really, really hard, right? It's not going to happen. Nobody, well, not many people are going to make themselves jobless just for, hey, the sake of the greater good. So that's the reason why I think that most organizations, most legacy organizations are not suited to microservices because they don't have the right kind of organization. Only when you start from scratch, no middle managers. And just for fun, is there any middle manager in the room? Or I can be offensive a bit. 
Uh, one, okay, you will come af afterwards, I will give you some chocolates, then <laughs> I will make up for it. Um, I, so first, I've met a couple of good middle managers in my life. Sorry? Okay. I, I've, I've really worked for a couple of them. If you find one, please follow them everywhere. They are very rare. Most of the middle managers I've met in my career, actually, they uh, were paid to approve my vacation requests, which in general, well, was just like stamping because everybody on the team was happy or if they weren't happy, they would have told no. Then to be the proxy for your raise at each yearly interview. I mean proxy because you cannot negotiate, right? Is we give you this. Yeah, but uh, it was decided. <laughs> and the third is reporting. So basically, your manager is a not so good bot that takes data and puts it in an Excel file or Google Sheet if they are modern, or Office 365 if you are on the Microsoft stack. And they get a lot of money for that. That's not funny. So if you find a good one who is really helpful, whose job is to remove the blocks in your job, well, follow them. <coughs> so I've rented a bit, and my point is microservices are an organizational mess because you need to migrate your organization. Or you keep it the same way, then you will get none of the benefits of microservices and all the issues. Now, from a technical point of view, because I assume that nobody will listen to my advice anyway, that's what I told you at the beginning, you will address it from the technical point of view. And from the technical point of view, it completely breaks what we did before. Because now, your phone needs to receive data from service one, service two, and service three, which means that not only do they need to actually make X calls, depending on how many services do you need, but on the backend side, that means that the team in charge of a service needs to care about the phone and the browser and the tablet and whatever. And this concern needs to be replicated along each service. And of course, there is like an explosion of cardinality if you add one more on each side. So my solution, which is not my solution, is to have something on the back end that is handled, managed, developed, and deployed by the front end team. It means that this new component will actually aggregate and filter the data that is just necessary for the phone. Because who better knows what they need than the phone team? and they are close to the service, so you make a single request here, you make multiple, but you are close, so that's not that hard, and everything works as expected. This is an organizational decision. And the problem is, this is an organizational decision, this is an organizational pattern, and people, tech people, I think I'm a tech person, we translate it into a technical pattern, like straightforward. It means that we generally do something like this. So I've shown you my ID of the monolith, which again is really, really bad. Everybody knows it. And I transform everything into a microservice and I added a backend for front end. I will directly do like this because like, this is not really interesting. So here now I have separated my 
microservices is on only two. So basically, is really stupid. I've just created an endpoint for the product and an endpoint for the info. And here I have the news, and I've created, you guess what, an endpoint for the news and an endpoint for the debug or info. So also, I, I need to have an else check for every service nowadays. And I aggregate them as the following. I still have my route, and here I will do the request on the back end and aggregate them however I want. Here I decided that I will have an attribute for the product, an attribute for your news, and a single attribute for all the debug information from all the different endpoints. So if I show you my Docker Compose file, here, this is how it works. Uh, API 6, I will just talk about it a bit later. And I have my catalog, my news, and not my best friend forever, my backend for front end. Um, let's see how it works. Docker compose down. I will just remove everything just to be sure. And up. It was really, really fast. It's a bit strange, but normally it should work as expected. So I can curl local host 90, and I say just at the roots, and yeah, it, it, it works. So I have everything. If I GQ it, I can have it in a nicely formatted way. So that's what I told you. I have the info endpoint, and I get like nested the health or info, whatever information for each service, then I have the data that I want. It means that, well, here I've written everything in Python, but as I mentioned, that's not so a great idea because, yeah, the back-end team writes in Python, but the front-end team writes in whatever. Probably I don't know about any front-end technology in Python. JavaScript, yeah. Or if you are an Android developer, you would write Kotlin code again, or Java code, or .NET for mobile, which I don't know if it exists, but I have no clue, but well, you can fix it for yourself. So the idea is that, as I mentioned, it's an architectural pattern that many, many implementation. And since here I'm using an API gateway, who knows? What's an API gateway, by the way? Who doesn't know what's an API gateaway? Okay. I'm always a bit worried. That's fine. But again, if you don't ask me question, I will assume that it works. I'm using an API gateway. So the idea is that you can do the exact same stuff, but you translate it in the API gateway. So instead of having a Python, here, I have just a plugin inside the API gateway. It's still the same team that de deploys it, but it's another implementation. And perhaps they are more at ease with it. So it's all about independent development and deployment. It has nothing to do with anything else. It's not a technical requirement. Um, I work on the Apache API 6 project. Who has heard about Apache API 6? Nobody? Or perhaps too shy? I don't know. In some countries, it's because of shyness. But the more I talk, the less people raise their hand. They always feel that, like there is a trap afterwards. <laughs> so it's uh, an API gateway built on Nginx. Who knows about Nginx? OK, that was not a trap. That was cool. So it's really robust reverse proxy. On top of it, the problem of Nginx is if you want to change any of the configuration, you need to stop the service, which is not that great in this day and age. Like, you don't want to have a static web page saying, hey, we are back in a few minutes. Huh? If Facebook doesn't do it, your grandmother probably wouldn't understand what it means. We know, well, all people know what it means, but us, the family, don't. 
So we have OpenRST. OpenRST is a Lua engine on top of Nginx that allows you to script your Nginx configuration. And then we've got plugins. And the plugins allow you to get like out of the box already prepared common use cases. But you can still write your own stuff, which is exactly what I did here. So what I did here is I changed my architecture again. And now my architecture on the Docker Compose file is back to what it was before. So there is no dedicated Python app for front end. Everything is in API 6. So there are two ways to deploy API 6. The first is with etcd. If you have dynamic configuration, etcd is a key distributed key value store, the same one used by Kubernetes. It's pretty robust. But here what I'm using, I'm using static files. So you can use it in a like, GitOps way. Up to you. And what I did, I created the same code that I did before. Is there any Lua developer here? Good, I'm, I'm not a Lua developer either. Uh, so I can show it to you. You can criticize my code. So basically, sorry, I've created a generic um, function to fetch the data from an endpoint here. I've created all the endpoints that I wanted. And then I go through all the structure and I get everything and I aggregate everything and I put it in JSON format. The only thing that I need to do is configure API 6 to have like an, a virtual endpoint because normally an API gateway should actually like forward somewhere. Here I create this virtual endpoint to say, okay, I will handle it by myself, which is not the usual use case. General, you forward. So I can start it again. And from the customer side, the, the user side, it shouldn't change anything. I think I know why it starts so fast. I didn't rebuild. Hmm. OK. So I didn't cheat you on purpose, but I still cheated. Curl. OK, and if I curl again, JQ, yes. So you still have the same results, even though the architecture has changed. And the organization is still the same. You still have your backend for front end. But in this case, instead of having a dedicated component, it's just a plugin inside of the API Gateway. Every team can have their own plugin that they deploy independently. So it doesn't mean that like, this pattern needs to be implemented in a certain way. You have multiple ways to do that. Um, if you have an API gateway and you don't want to uh, code any Lua, uh, depending on, on the API uh, gateway, but it's possible in Apache API 6, you can do a bulk fetch. So basically, you still will do one request from the front end to the API gateway, no code, no nothing, and on the API gateway, you configure something generic that does all the calls, and you get return all the data. So we are back to square one, only we have one single call. So it's quick and dirty. You get some benefits, not all of them, but it still works. Good. Um, as I mentioned, it won't be one hour. Please, don't do microservices. Really, don't, really, really don't. As I mentioned, you won't listen to me. Or perhaps you are already like neck deep in microservices. You cannot leave. I can understand it. Yeah. Mm. Um, but if you do, and if you have multiple device types, then backend from front end is one pattern that you can use. Think about it, 
I will repeat it, it's an organizational pattern. There is no direct straightforward implementation. You can create your own components using the language you want. You can use an API gateway and perhaps there is something that I didn't think about. Very important to go beyond the scope of this talk, every problem is an organization problem. People problems are still simple. If we or both of those of you have disagreement, I can talk, we can have a meeting, you are smart people, we will come to a consensus. Worst case, I will fire one of you. <laughs> or both. This is easy to fix. What is very, very hard, impossible to fix, are organizational issues. There are so many organizational problems that we need to cope with that make no sense. Stupid stuff. You said you are a middle manager, so basically you need to report to somebody in general. You need metrics. There are two kinds of metrics. Vanity metrics that are easy to compute that tell you nothing or metrics that are very, very hard to compute, and well, it takes time or it takes money or whatever. Other stupid organizational statements, you have a company, you divide it into silos, you try to optimize one single silo, <coughs> and you think that the sum of all local optimums gives you the global optimum. Who here believes it? That's completely crazy. Guess what? Every one of us is still doing that. You've got a company. You've got only two departments. You give budget to department A you give budget to department B. Department A at the end of the year needs budget. They already like spent everything. Department B didn't. What happens? How long does it take? Forever. <laughs> <laughs> so basically you have a department that needs money it will never get it. Only because at the beginning, you decided to split the money into virtual buckets. See that I'm, I'm only complaining. I'm not providing you any solution. Huh? The French way, right? Um, but it's still an issue. But the, 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 if only I could make you think about what we take for granted, most of the rules that either we apply to ourselves or that the organization puts on us, most of the rules are pretty stupid. They don't help us at all. They actually makes our, they, they make our work harder, sometimes even impossible. If you find yourself in such an organization, you have two solutions. Be demotivated until you retire. And in general, I must admit, they give you a lot of money for your demotivation. Or leave. Thanks a lot. I'm Nicola Frankel. You can follow me on Twitter. You can, hey, I, I, I want to make a social experiment. If you have a Mastodon account, please follow me there. And I want to count how many people are on Mastodon, because you know there is this great shift from Twitter to Mastodon, and it doesn't seem to translate so far with my experience. Um, if you are interested about the, the code, though it's in Python, I mean, I could write it, you can probably read it, um, you can check it. I've uh, made all the commit, the git commit steps as one of the steps I've described. So you can follow around, see the differences. 
And uh, if I got you interested in Apache API 6, of course, you are welcome to have a look. It's an Apache product. It's managed by the Apache Foundation. So basically, it will be free and maintained, well, free forever, maintained depending on who is interested. And um, that's good. I don't know how much time do we have, but we have, well, we have time for questions. So I will be very happy to have discussions now. Or not. Sorry? Who is the middle manager? You mean among you? Ah, who is the middle manager? I, 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 no, I don't snitch. <laughs> I don't snitch. I'm not. Well, actually, like officially, I am. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> I have very independent people like me, so that's fine. Um, other questions or comments or whatever. Yes. I think um, sort of the back and the front end stuff could be like the stuff you were saying with like microservices that could be done uh, instead with and like different teams working on sort of the front and the back end. Like that could probably be done with like GraphQL where you can like also filter stuff out. As the volunteer, can you take the mic, please? Oh, cool, cool. Yeah. <laughs> you should be the one to know. <laughs> um, with uh, like a. Uh, the stuff with like filtering and stuff like that when you have different teams working on uh, sort of different parts of the uh, application when you think like something like uh, GraphQL uh, would be quite helpful with that and like just sort of uh, using like a federated server or something like that to actually like consume all your services that you have uh, and then being able to communicate that with your uh, dev team on the front end. Yeah, GraphQL is definitely an option. Also, I was a back consultant because I was able to say I don't have enough experience. So here, in that case, I don't have enough experience to tell you whether GraphQL is a good solution, a good technical solution to this problem. I think not. But I cannot tell you, hey, this is the reason. So I, I need to delve deeper into it. As far as I understand, GraphQL has issues on its own. And again, in my opinion, if you have an organizational issue and you try to solve with a technical solution, it's going to have many ripple effects. So probably it's possible, but there might be side effects that you don't want. But it's an option, of course. Other questions? I have a question for you. I don't know about, I mean, some of you are young, some of you are not that young. Do you feel, like me, that you have to cope more with organizational problems than with technical problems? And both yes or no are fine. I just want to understand. <laughs> well, I'd say I do, but I'm head of engineering, so I'm a middle manager. If, if, if you wanted to know what middle manager is, because a dev manager or a head of engineering could be a middle manager. Oh, I came from a developer background, mm -hmm. but I still cope it. Which is fine, because now you know all the problems that your team has to solve, and you can try to shield them from. Yeah, my job is to be the umbrella to protect them from the shit, unblock them. So you see, this is one, if, if he's right, <laughs> if he speaks the truth, which I cannot assume, no, no. it's one of the few <laughs> middle managers you can work yeah. for. Uh, yeah. Indeed. Yeah. And we only just had a team reorg to bulk up a, pro a, pro a product area that's integrations with third parties, and we moved people from the other teams. And one of the delivery managers said, well, the other teams have got quite small. We'll just merge them. I said, don't you dare to. Because they're on the product. They're product specialists on those teams. So leave them alone. They need to work on that. And if you merge them, they will never come back. Them in the future, in about six months, when we add more developers into them to get, because there's enough, where you heard, because there's enough backlog work for them to do. Yeah, okay. where, where you heard, yeah, they have, they have them. I didn't know that's that. good. <laughs> because my, most, of, mo most of the frustration I had as a tech person was nobody listened to me. Of course, perhaps it's the way I talk. Huh? But yeah. even when I took very nicely, and it was like a lot of effort for 
not that much result. So anybody else has like the same experience as, as I have regarding the organizational problems and the technical problems or? In general, my experience is that the older you get, the more you get the same feeling because you get like exposed to more, to wider problems. Of course, when you are on your code, when you, are, you start working on, on like, you are a young engineer, young developer, you start working, well, you won't be exposed to this kind of problem. Your problem will be, hey, should I use a hash map or a, a list, a linked list, or um, like a doubly linked list or whatever. And that's fine. I mean, that was happy times. <laughs> and if you get into like tech lead and architects and solution architect, then I, I was exposed to this kind of stuff. So thanks a lot for your attention. Um, I will be there until tomorrow noon. If you have questions and you were too shy to ask them in front, then just please come. And thanks again. Enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you.